stuff. You guys always have to exaggerate things. It's not um, <laughs> not fair at all. <laughs> yeah, but I guess I was probably, the, was I the only one guilty of doing that? I don't think Adam was there. I don't remember Adam being there. I don't have any memory of that at all. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the purpose of this meeting is to, to uh, have some story time. Today is November 7th, 21, correct? Right. And we're all adults now. We're all past 21. Does this mean we can drink? Yeah, yeah, I already got started myself, so... Um, I'm forgetting it's morning for you guys. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It is morning, but I hadn't really noticed that. We're going by Denmark time today. Okay. What time is it? It's uh, so I got your, my, uh, my beer. Open your, open your bottles of snops now. According to Wikipedia, bubble sort, sometimes referred to as sinking sort, is a simple sorting algorithm that repeatedly steps through the list, compares adjacent elements, and swaps them if they are in the wrong order. The bubble sort, that's the first one on this list that Ben sent me. And um, all I know is that uh, I had a boss that, that used the bubble sort and kind of got torn up for it by Harvey because the bubble sort was an inefficient way. And then he got torn up by you too because he says, well, I use the bubble sort. And, and you said uh, that is the most efficient, une inefficient way. And and then Harvey got back on him again and said, I would be embarrassed if I were you for admitting that you use the bubble sword and that kind of stuff. So me at the time, I was, uh, I said, what the hell is the bubble sword? <laughs> so, so you were explaining it to me. It's like, when you put things in alphabetical order, you find this one here and then you switch this one and and uh, okay, I think I I think I got it. And I I can kind of see why it might be a little inefficient, but when there's only three of them, the bubble sort does work pretty fast, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> is that is that it? Is that uh, it, do you guys um, have anything to add about the bubble sort? I just remember you asking me about it and I was like, what the heck? Or like, why are you asking me about the bubble sort? And uh, and then you, you seemed very interested in my answer. And then that was the last I heard about it, you know, but but apparently it, it caused a domino effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, it kind of yeah. did. It, it really got blown out of proportion, but it was more of a, a <laughs> Harvey thing was my boss at the time and but yeah that's about it so i i don't know that it's it's the it's the greatest but i'm surprised it's on your list ben uh, well it's on my list because i think that see i don't remember it that way at all i remember you telling us about this boss you had that was just an idiot but he thought he was smart and we kind of set up adam to like take him down it, it, you know looking back he was kind of mean like the guy was the poor guy was just such an idiot and and he happened to mention in, in, in just mention that he uses the bubble sword and Adam just, you know, took, tore him apart. Yes. Um, Adam was there is what I remember. Yeah, he, he was, was in Fortalis or Roswell or wherever it was. He was Roswell. Yeah. This was the guy with the big head, right? Uh, Yeah, big head and a meaty body, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I, remember. I don't remember what he looked like at all, but... Um, but I mean, now looking back, I feel kind of sorry for the guy. I feel very sorry for the guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah, uh, he was, he was not the worst person in the world. I mean, I, I learned that, but you know, he just, yeah, he was, he thought he was a lot smarter than he was. Maybe you could put it that way, but he wasn't, he wasn't too horrible either. Well, now we're old enough to know that that's a very common problem yeah oh boy yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's for sure at the time yeah. we thought it was just <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah 
So I, I guess do you guys have anything else to add about that one? No, I don't think so. I just a memory that I had that came up. Okay. Um, so why don't we mark this uh, as done? Okay. Streaking to the chicken pen, which I, I don't even um, know what you mean. <laughs> well, that was just a time when um, that was when the chicken pen was was over kind of where the cars are parked now. Um, and so it would that would have been on the north side of the sidewalk. Yeah. And one night mom and dad went out and uh, and you, you know, you were just like we were in one of your like, let's do something crazy streaks. <laughs> and so you decided you wanted to just to to take off all our clothes, we would take off all our clothes and run to the chicken pen and back. And I was just like, no way. What if somebody sees this? I will not do that. <laughs> yeah, but you did it. And I have this memory of you, just your bare cheeks running down the, <laughs> running down the, that sidewalk. And of course it was pitch black and nobody, nobody saw, <laughs> nobody saw anything, but. I would um, do it again. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm, as, as I'm I still like it. very, very, um, brave very not brave like as, stuff as, like that so um it's no surprise i didn't do it as i recall oh, you're, you're, it, was a, it was a very uh, still night and then the only sound was carol saying no thanks i'm taken <laughs> <laughs> yes that that is that is absolutely what happened and then diego went into his room and cried for three days <laughs> he was like two and a half you guys always have to exaggerate things it's not um <laughs> not fair at all <laughs> yeah but i guess i was probably the, was i the only one guilty of doing that i don't think adam was there i don't remember adam being there i don't have any memory of that at all okay okay in fact i'm shocked and horrified <laughs> <laughs> okay um uh, but nothing nothing else about that one I don't think so. It covers it. Okay. All right. So um, the next one says switchblade. I mean, I, I remember it quite well. If anybody else wants to tell it, that's perfectly fine. Um, does any, who, who has memory of this one? I, I do, of course. I mean, I put it on the list. Um, but you, yeah, you should definitely tell the story. Yeah. So um, back in the days, we went to Mexico to on one of those church missions to uh, help out with uh, building a church in a poor community and that kind of stuff. Um, and then at the end of that mission, we went uh, into Juarez and, and they had a like a Mercado type deal where it was like a, basically a big flea market. Um and uh switchblades are legal over there and so i secretly went and bought a uh, switchblade and hid it from from mom and dad and um and but i was just so scared to cross the border when we were just you know teenagers in the back of the car so um i trusted adam to keep it keep it secret and keep it hidden and so we made it through um back into the states and i hid the switchblade up in my balcony up there and um then i went i think i went to springer that's where i went i went to springer uh during the summer for uh for a week or so just to help uh, grandpa do work around the farm and then uh of course we didn't have any cell phones back then so i knew nothing about what had happened and um and Adam um, came and told me um, that that my switchblade was recovered because my little brother had been snooping up on the balcony. And um, so I think the plan was for mom and dad to say, OK, we're going to just put the switchblade on the table and then Diego's going to be hor horrified when he just sees it sitting there on the table when he gets back. But Adam intercepted the blade and said, we can make a deal where Pat will buy it from you. And maybe I got, you know, 30% uh, less than what I paid for it. 
And I, th I thought, well, that's an easy out. That's a good way to uh, make this happen. So Adam secretly swiped it, sold it to Pat, gave me the money, probably took about a 40% commission. That's okay. It saved me from being in trouble. I don't recall this Pat person. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, um, I didn't know the Pat part of the story. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, was the idea that we just had to get it out of the house forever, or like, why wouldn't like would mom and dad just forget that it existed when? Exactly, that doesn't make any sense. Like, they oh. they would they knew about it, so so yeah, what would they just? Oh well, all is good. Well, it was never mentioned again. Interesting. Until now, Interesting. you know what I mean. I wonder if if they just didn't really care and they just didn't want to deal with it. Maybe. Maybe they just forgot about it and realized it wasn't quite as big of a deal as they thought, you know? Yeah. But ben, had, what is your memory of this? I, I just remember finding it and, you know, you know, by the way, Diego, I do feel, I do feel bad about it. I you know I did after, after I turned you in and everything, I felt bad about it, but we weren't exactly buddies at the time. We weren't exactly friends at the time. Um, but, uh, I I told mom and dad about it, so they definitely knew about it, and, yeah, and that's all I remember. And yeah, of course, I remember you were very upset with me. Yeah, uh, what was? But I don't how remember did, what your punishment was, if any, or what. Oh, how you did mean, react to it though? What's see, I, go ahead. How did mom and dad react when you told them? I, you know, it's hard to remember, but I don't. I do kind of think that it was one of those things. Looking back now their reaction was kind of like, oh, great. Now we have to deal with it. And I didn't really even want to deal with it. So I do think that it was kind of a nuisance to them. They would rather if I had just not said anything so they didn't have right, to deal with it. Right. Um, they were more mad at the snitch than the... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the thing is, I was upset about it just because I, I basically was busted. But I didn't, uh, I, I, from what I remember, I only verbally confronted you about it and, or asked you about it, you know, like, why would you do that or whatever? And that was about it. I don't think, um, but no, they never confronted me at all about it. That's interesting. I think that kind of proves that they, they just didn't care or really want to deal with it. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I don't, I don't want them to see this video because they might punish me now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe they knew about it. You know, it's it's amazing the things parents know and and just don't let on about it. Maybe they knew. Yeah, you know, they it's true. Parents do know a lot, but I I don't even want to ask them. You know. Oh, you were really sneaky. You were really sneaky. <laughs> and why did Adam have to smuggle it across for you? Like, what kind of deal is that? I I I, I don't I, know. I was the only one with the the luggage space. <laughs> Well, I mean, we were all in the car. I mean, you know, I don't, at the time, I just thought, you know. Yeah, that, but I was like, you know, well, you're going to have to hide it up your butt. And you were like, oh, no, I can't do that. So then I had to do it for you. So you <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. But, you know, but the that, funny thing is, I have no memory of that at all, of, of getting, I mean, I remember I bought a flight knife that same trip, right? You I bought, bought a, knife a knife too? Yeah, I bought a knife, but it wasn't a switchblade. Oh yeah, it yeah. A, it was a butterfly knife, mm -hmm. and I don't. But I don't remember any stress about getting it across the border, and like now, I it, it sort of, you know, who knows? It could have been an ugly situation if they find something in the car, and and all the adults would be horrified, and, and we would have really been embarrassed in front of the bunches and the Lewises and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. So. But I don't remember any stress, and I don't remember taking your knife. Uh, or anything you but just I remember yeah, I'll, I'll hold it for you like no big deal you know okay well, you know that's that's yeah. basically i think you just had it in your pocket or whatever i was hoping that the uh, canines wouldn't be able to sniff out blades right so so was it the kind that came out the blade came from the side or up the middle up the middle it was a real switchblade i mean if i don't know much about switchblades but it was, you know, it was a real knife. I wonder if they're still illegal. 
or or were they ever illegal? Like it's possible that we just had it in our mind. They were in the, and the, the border would be like whatever. I just know that you couldn't you couldn't find one. Like when, when we found it in Mexico, we were like, holy crap, I've never seen one in real right, life. Right, right. And they did have the ones that came out the side too, and but we didn't buy those. I still have years later, I I was the one that wanted to get one. And uh, you didn't snitch me out. And I still have it. But the but the sucky thing about it is that I lost the switch. So all that stick on the button is just this metal that that sticks up and and basically you have to like use pliers because it's, uh, it's kind of it's a, problem a shame in, in, a, in a fight you're like gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna cut you bro hang on do you have a pair of pliers <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame because it is pretty cool but um I, I i don't know i need to figure out like how to rig a button for that or something because uh yeah yeah, you you're pretty good at saving that kind of stuff. Yeah, I yeah, I don't actually know where it is, but yeah, I I know I have not purposely gotten rid of it. Okay, uh, the next one is Adam's pink room and his his pink room. I don't know anything about this other than it may have been pink at one point. Um, please explain. Well, I just kind of have a memory of it being pink and I just, it just kind of popped into my head. So Adam, why don't you take this one? Well, we talked about it a little bit um, and, and I, uh, it rings a tiny bell for me. And I think what happened is that when I maybe hit puberty or something, uh, mom and dad decided that we, we didn't really need to be in the same room anymore. So I got to inherit uh, the the room on the north side of the house. And I remember that. I remember getting my own room and, and that was pretty cool. Um, and I have no memory of what we did with that room before that. That's the weird thing. Like, Oh, it was a living room. I remember it being a living room when we were very young. Very young, well, that's true. Very young, yeah. But I mean, when I was like, when what was it when I was 10? I, I guess it was kind of like a extra living room. So wait a minute. So you guys, you guys shared the room, Diego's later room. You guys shared that one? Yeah, for a long time. We had bunk beds in there. I never knew that you guys shared that room. I thought oh, that yeah, you guys we, always had your own room. By the time you were born, you had a whole mansion to yourself, you know. <laughs> no, I, I well, the butler and everything. But um, yeah, we we shared the room until I was maybe 12 or 13. I would say. Okay, that makes sense because probably I was in the crib in mom and dad's room. And then when I went, when I moved into Diego's room, you moved into the other. That makes sense. Well, what did happen then? Now I'm really confused because I, I don't know that it was that late in life that you got your own room because, because the addition was put on when I was just, I don't know, seven. Man, I just have this crazy memory uh, that just popped into my head, but it's it's of it's of the family room. Like I, it never occurred to me, but I have this memory now of of yes, that room being a family room, and we would we maybe we'd even watch movies in there. I remember having popcorn or kumquats or something weird like that, and there was a um, there was some kind of canopy hanging from the ceiling. There was some kind of like gray, I mean brown. Um, something hanging from like the corner of the ceiling and it was a family room for a while because I remember the, everybody being in there watching TV yeah we didn't have any other options because this this the room here is an addition um, so well you know we also had a, like the world's smallest TV oh yeah nine inch or yeah you know we we had a very small TV and so there would be no joy in having a big room and watching TV because the TV would have to be really close to the couch anyway. But now that I think about it, I think that room was pink. And I just inherited it. And then I think I, I remember complaining and then we painted it. Yeah, that very well could be. Good memory, good good call on that one. I, I just- uh, Yeah, that's really pushing the boundaries you know, there. And, and honestly, I think the only reason why I remember 
that it was a living room is because of pictures that we had of Donna and David uh, back there. You know, my dad had taken pictures of them sitting on some little love seat or something. And, and yeah, so that was, that was a little living room. Wow. That's crazy. Because we never had a TV in the, in the front room. That, you know, that was, that was like a parlor where we had like the hex table and we had a couch and we had that brick, remember the brick? Yeah, the brick wall, wall with the, yeah. Like the, behind the fireplace. Yes, yes. Yeah. But there was never a TV in that room. No, not really. Now, the, the day that we, I don't know what year it was, um, but we went to that place called Crutchfield downtown on uh, Grand and we bought a color TV for the first time when I was, I, I'm not sure. Was it the 13 inch RCA? Yeah, 13 inch white RCA tube TV. And we had it in the kitchen and we sat down and we just spent hours watching. Um, Remember know, the dial? It had a very like. Yeah, quick, thir 13 quick. channels on the yep. side. And I mean, uh, it was, we're just mind blowing. You know, it's, this, we got color TV. We are just. Yep. I remember that TV. Yeah. Um, I found a TV that looked kind of like it in mom and dad's closet, but it's not the same one. So I, I don't know what happened there, but. Yeah, it'd be crazy to see the TV again. But yeah, I remember just the way that dial felt when you turn it, it was like chunk, chunk. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember the, the remote that we had? I guess that maybe it was a little later. We had this the first remote, but it wasn't a real remote. It was just like a box. And it was, the box was practically bigger oh. than the TV. And it had a bunch of buttons on it. Yeah. And a cord that went to the TV. Yeah. And you, you would just press the buttons and they were like really loud. Yeah, and it was like, dunk, dunk. <laughs> now that I do not remember. It had, I think it might've actually had as many as 20 buttons that you just yeah. change the channel, but, but you couldn't control the volume on it. It was only for channels. Right. Hmm. yeah i don't remember that it was not seriously it was like this big like like longer than this cup it was it was pretty big um but it had probably the coax would go into it and then bat another coax would go out to, it, to the tv and you had to drag it around the coax <laughs> oh, we just got it to the point where we just put it on the entertainment center and walk up and change them from there <laughs> yeah why bother why bother yeah um so see you know, that's why i was freaking out when we were you know a little off subject here but like in that show Mad Men, that's supposed to be so authentic it was like in the 60s and they had they had remotes right they had remotes on their tvs and it so, just for me that was really hard to buy i i don't know uh if if it's true or not but i, I do believe that I think we were just behind everybody else. Yeah, that's um, totally possible. Because totally. dad said that he, when he was a kid, uh, Tata went out and bought a color TV. Um, so, so I think they did have them, but we were just, very few people had them. And, you know, if you were, if you were rich, then maybe. Um, right. But Mad Men is from the sixties. Okay. I thought it was fifties, but. No, maybe it is. I don't, it know. Is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, people used to have sex back then too. It's really interesting. Oh. Okay, anyone want to play cards? Um, this is another one that I, I'm just amazed that uh, that you'd remember, Ben. So, uh, do you want to tell about that one? Yeah, my memory is that. Um that this was a story you told me and it, but it was about Adam. Yeah. And I, it's funny now that you mention it because this only makes sense if you guys shared that room, which I never really realized that you guys shared that room. I always thought of it as a room that Gego and I shared. And Adam was um, laying in bed at night and out that window that faces west, he saw a hand come up um, to try to like open up the window or something. And he, he didn't know what to do. So he said, anyone want to play cards really loud? And then the hand just disappeared. And that was that. 
Yeah. And so that's the story he told me. But that was terrifying for me. I mean, I was just a oh. little boy and I was terrified. Like thinking of a hand. So I was always looking up at that window, waiting for a hand to come up. I just thought, you know, what is the worst thing I could think of? Like, you know, I, I hate cards. I hate it when people want to play cards. So <laughs> Well, I remember he the, what he had told me is he said, Diego, want to play cards? And he's like, well, why'd you use my name? Well, things were just rushing through my head, he says. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we have a bone to pick with you, man. True or not true? About the bone? <laughs> <laughs> About the story. It's probably true. Um, I, I just only have the biggest memory, but uh, I'm sure that... Uh, I'm sure that there, what, what, what room was it? This would have been the room that you guys shared. The south side, the, yeah, the yeah, south no, side I, room. I think I was just. Stop pointing, Diego. We, 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 we get it that you're in our childhood home, okay? Stop <laughs> pointing around. All right, you got it. <laughs> um, why don't you move to that family room and show us uh, how that looks? <laughs> it's the same, right? It looks the same? Yeah, it looks the same. Just go check um, if that room is pink or not. That's just simple. I don't even know what it is. You want to, you want to go over there? It, it probably is pink. That's the funny thing. <sighs> you very carefully took off the layers of paint, got down to the original pink. Oh, by the way, I'm doing some remodeling here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, your, your new laundry. Oh, no, your new shower. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a new shower. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, it is pink or peach, peach maybe. Maybe that's what I was remembering. remembering. Oh man, the light fixture. Man, I forgot about those light fixtures. That's original, isn't it? We haven't changed that. Yeah. That thing's gotta be really old. That's now Carly's room. And then this one here is kind of a similar color actually. Isn't it funny how the uh, how the older kid always gets the better room? That's funny how that works, you know. <laughs> nothing, nothing changes. It was a total coincidence. There's no way anybody can possibly uh, love anybody more than their first child. It's true. It's true. Good, true statement there. Yeah, the next one is, says uh, hole in the wall. Yeah, so this is this is the one where you you were on the top bunk of that of the room that we shared, and you cut a, you punched a hole in the wall so you could see people coming down the hall. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, that is true. That which is, is funny. Which is funny now, and it shows how it shows how relaxed mom and dad were because. If Henry did something like that, I I just cannot imagine the the how severe the punishment would be. <laughs> There's like <laughs> that is a, that is, punching a hole in the drywall for purposes of of a, of a people is is not acceptable. And I you don't know, remember mom and dad having the slightest concern or reaction or clue. I, I never uh, felt a, a bit of shame or. Right. Wait though. That. Wait. There was a there was a bookshelf there, so it wouldn't have been obvious. No, it was the hallway. Only... See, I, I was I picturing kind of... just a drywall with a hole in it, but of course, no, yeah. no. There was a bookshelf, and I oh. planned it so that it was like kind of, you know, low on the shelf, and I could I just put books right up to the hole. So you did it? I thought Diego did it. No, uh, well, I no, I... I don't know. I, I think I think Adam did it. And then dad repaired it and then I did it again. Anyway, there's yeah, still a bookshelf there. This is the shelf, huh? There's still a bookshelf. There. Yeah, there's still a shelf. And I think the hole is or was right here. Yeah, you can see the the plaster that job that he did. <laughs> oh my it. gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I just so, do you remember that it smelled like the, the inside of the wall had a had a very, you know, kind of distinct smell that i don't remember well but but think about it i mean the air probably came in from the 
from under the house to crawl space, right? Because the there was no insulation in that in the wall. No, no. It, yeah, it smelled oh, of like, yeah, it smelled of like the underside of a house or with a mixture of um, fiberglass insulation. Yeah. It would it would actually be really cool to have like an actual like people with real glass like nicely mounted in there. That'd be pretty slick. <laughs> One of those fish eye views, the raw hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it's weird when you said hole in the wall. I thought you were talking about that time that uh, Adam and I were wrestling, and I put my foot up against the wall, and it just sank into the wall. In yeah, the so hole. did I. Yep. I I. I remember that as well. I remember that as well. Now that's another thing. I, I, I can't imagine that mom and dad were happy about that, but I don't remember them giving us a hard time or. I think they were pretty mad and, and they, and it was like that for a while. Dad didn't, nobody got around to fixing it for a while. That's, yeah. that's, that's a pain in the ass repair and, and dad was not on top of those things. It is, a, it is a pain, yeah. <laughs> it's, well now, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. It's. It's time consuming. It's it's not hard to do, but it's time consuming. Um, so, and you know, it, what really blows my mind is we used to, okay, we used to play that game where, you know, you put blankets down and then you're going to, we're going to jump from this blanket to this blanket without touching the floor. Okay. Okay. We both do it. Now we're going to back this thing up about two inches and we're going to do it again and, and see who can jump the farthest and all that. And then, so then we got to the point where we were almost eight feet away, you know, as kids, but it's too hard of a landing. So we'd grab um, cushions from the couch and put them on there. And that way we have a soft landing land on. We never pick that stuff up. Mom would never complain about it. Just always put, pick it up, put it back. Amazing. Amazing. That she no was. kidding, man. No kidding. Yeah. That is amazing. I don't know if there's anybody in the world that would put up with that. No nowadays. kidding. It's uh -huh. true. Mom was incredibly patient in a lot of ways. You know, I remember um, things too, like um, us coming in and tracking mud oh, to the yeah. house. And I just remember like clumps of mud on the carpet. And she would get mad, but she would also just bring and clean it up too. And and as a parent now, I would I would lose my mind. I would be so angry. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I never thought about that. We we must have just left the house in a in a state. But I think she, her attitude was, well, they're playing and they're entertaining themselves and they're burning off a bunch of energy and you know, yeah. better than fighting or whatever. Well, we still had energy to fight, that's for sure. <laughs> but I think most of all, like that was pretty rare. I think most of the time we we just played and played and played and and there was. You know, ninety percent of the time we were having a good time, and there was no trouble. And then I don't have much trouble. memory. I don't have a whole lot of memory of you guys fighting. Jeez, I don't think we fought that much. I think it was just memorable when it happened. Yeah, is it, it possible a... too, though, that you know I didn't come along until, you know, I wouldn't have had memories until maybe Diego, you were probably nine or ten. So is it possible that the fighting took place kind of before that? Oh, probably, like, yeah. Fighting? There was certainly fighting before that, but uh, I think it was pretty rare, and we were pretty quick to make up. And Dad, Dad had this stupid. Remember, he would he would make us hold hands and and kiss and make up and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was, it was really like it was embarrassing and it was awkward, and and it, but it was also just kind of like enough to be like, okay, well, you know, Dad is Dad is going to make us hold hands, so let's stop. <laughs> Well, there was just one time, though, that we were fighting in that uh, north side room. Um, and and I mean, it was just like I was I was trying to hurt you for sure. And and then at one moment, I just looked up and dad was just standing there watching us. He smacked us, man. He smacked us. He was just watching like um, this. Yeah, I have a memory of that. But he, you know, looking back, he was mostly mad that we were leaving him out of the of the action, you know. So then he just jumped in and <laughs> yeah, I remember that because I think I had just like gotten the advantage, and then you just stopped. You just like went limp, and I was like, right. "What the heck?" 
you know, did you did you die or what? And then I turned around and oh, okay. <laughs> it's funny though because um, you know, if you have two boys that are e like kind of evenly matched, does it make sense to kind of just let them duke it out a little bit? I don't know, maybe. They didn't like it, but they didn't uh, expect us not to do it at all. I don't think. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then there was one time when I was, oh man, I, I don't know. I, I've always had a, a really bad temper. And, and uh, I remember we were at the Carnegie Library and we got in a fight inside the car. And I just started swinging. I was just like, and it was totally dark. Yeah. It's dark. And Adam was always very wiry, you know what I mean? Like no, no matter where I would swing my fist, it felt like a bunch of bailing wire just sitting, <laughs> blocking everything. And uh, and I I got one I got one through and popped him on the nose and gave him a bloody nose and then immediately I was so sorry. So we made up after that. It, we made up, but then it was like there was blood all over the car. And, oh, yeah, it was bad. You know, it, yeah. We couldn't really hide the fact that there had been quite a, a fight. Right, right. That was pretty funny. And then I, I, I just... Much, oh, go ahead. I'm just going to... I just found a picture of an old remote that it's not the, exactly the same, but I'm going to send it to you guys uh, in email because it's sort of like the one we were talking about. Okay. And then I remember uh, uh, that we got in a fight in that same room one time and I kind of got the advantage over you a little bit where there was a milk crate in the closet and, and I, I pinned you down on top of that milk crate a little bit. I mean, you worked your way out of there, but it was like, I was, man, that must've hurt, you know? That must've hurt. I think uh, I'd be pretty upset if somebody did. Oh, wow, yeah. I'll put that up on the... You know, I haven't seen a milk crate in years. It's crazy. Um, the metal, those wire metal ones, not the plastic ones. Oh, yeah. I remember the metal one, too. But, you know, those things were actually really handy. You know, you could put stuff in them. You could stand on them. They were very, you could, you know, sit on them. Really kind of a cool little contraption. Yeah, most definitely. I have a few of those right now. Yeah. You have some? No, but it would be cool. Oh. <laughs> I've forgotten about the metal ones. They're just not as yeah. stackable. They're not stackable like the. I wonder what happened to those. I think they were just too expensive to manufacture. No, I mean, mom and dad had a bunch of. Oh, them. Yeah. oh, oh man, they've um, been gone for a long time. Yeah, I haven't seen any. The next one says moving the chicken house. Yeah, so the chicken house used to be north of the sidewalk, but then it was moved over on the pad toward the west side at some point. And I think grandpa came over. I don't know who else. Some 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 people came over and, and we used to come along. And I mean, we, I didn't help, I don't think. Um, and moved that, that chicken house all the way over there. So that, that had to have been a, a pretty major job. But it's also one of those things that, you know, leads back to, you know, every time I go to visit mom and dad, you know, mom wants to move furniture around and I get so bugged with her, you know, can't, why are you constantly moving furniture? Can I, you just leave it. But mom has something wired in her that just she constantly has to move stuff, even if it's just moving it and moving it back. And I wonder why we had to move the chicken house, you know, we moved the chicken house over there. We moved the pin. Why? Like, wh why was that necessary to do anything? Um, well, I, I mean, I, I guess I can agree with her in that it's just, it's good for you to move furniture because it, it just good for your brain to have a different setup in the house. Time. I mean, if you're blind, then that's not good, but, but um, it just, it makes your life a little more entertaining somehow. Um, I know that we moved the chicken house right up to where the shed was up against it. So I think you're right. I think it was, we, we put bars under it and lifted and, and we used come alongs, but it's just, I never would have remembered having done that if you hadn't brought it up. 
It seemed um, like a pretty big project. It's, you know, it was a 12 by 12 room. So that's a, oh, maybe not, maybe a 10 by 10, but no smaller than that. I mean, it was, it was a pretty good size and, and uh, yeah, so it would be, it'd be hard to do it without damaging it, you know? Yep. So, and there was no, there was no floor. So no. There, there wasn't, you know, on the bottom, there wouldn't have been much structure. So we'd have to be delicate about it. Right, right, right. That's true. How weird that we even successfully did it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yep. Okay, anything else on that? Nope. Okay. It, it just, just, I want to add that it's just sure. uh, another example of how I would never have thought of that again. Uh, so it's nice to, to dislodge these memories. And I have no idea why we had to move it. There was not, it wasn't like we put something else there. Well, I think that's where they ended up putting the driveway. So, but I, not for a long time, I don't think. Actually, hmm. I don't even remember when they put that driveway in. They didn't put that driveway in until they, they put the double wide down, right? You have to be right. I'm sure you're right. But believe it or not, it's been, you know, 20. 20, 21 it's years. Yeah. Yeah. But I do remember there was a there was a break in the fence in that area. And for a while we could like open the fence and put a car in there or something. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then we also had another oh, I didn't mean to point. Sorry. Um yeah, that's better. <laughs> we had another break in the fence back in the back where we could bring cars in through the back um yeah oh yeah i remember that basically one. the carport or the or the garage is there now so you couldn't really do that anymore but yep all right you know and, um just to, just to while we're on that subject i do have not a detailed memory but i have a memory of before we owned that second lot really yeah because you know, our fence lots. No, no, we, we just had the one lot and then um, our fence went around our house. And so it was pretty close to the, to the house. And then people would just cut across that lot. You know, there was no fence or anything. Um, and there was never any par like parking shortage. So it wasn't like people would park there, but, but it was just kind of annoying to have people drive right by the house. So at some point they found out, they asked how much it would cost to buy it and decided it was worth it. And that was a really wow, smart decision. It was a smart decision, but but wait a minute, there were there were two cement pads on that lot. Yeah. So how could they drive through it? Do you mean between the fence and the, the lots? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Between the pads and the and the fence. Yeah. That doesn't sound like something that people would do. You know, I think people are very respectful of other people's property. Yeah, back time. back in those days, the Gregos and the Floreses were upstanding citizens, so they. Uh, They lost their way somewhere. I knew I was going to have to edit this video. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I, I have no memory of what you were talking about, Adam, and I have so non-memory of that that I'm almost convinced that you might be wrong. I'm going to have to try to verify that, and I'm sorry, but it no, might be fine. a little embarrassing for you. Um, I, it just occurred to me that uh, that would that would definitely be outside of your Oh. Memory because it was very early on when we oh, most of the time we had two lots and you know it was so early on that i don't even think we thought of it as two lots you know but if you look at the neighborhood it obviously is yeah we didn't think of it as but yeah i just i thought they had bought it right away but i i guess now you know mommy mom's memory is not perfect um but perhaps she'd remember that i think she would remember that Oh, shaving cream fight. So, um, yeah. So that was some event. What event was that? It was like a something. I want to say it was Adam's graduation. No, uh, it's uh, possible. It was possible. Because I, I do feel like it was at the beginning of the summer. Yeah. Well, um, I don't even know if Adam was around or not. I don't know what event it was, but. 
we got cans of shaving cream, man, and we um, sprayed each other. But I, I was, I was very physically fit, and Ben was kind of small, so I could like run around him in circles and 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 just you know go for the face, and and he would like get me down here on my thighs. <laughs> But he's such a good sport because um, he didn't get the better end of that. That <laughs> I just covered, and I think Chantel might have, might have even gotten involved uh, with that as well. Are you uh, sure Sean wasn't there? Or maybe was Sean there? I, I, I don't know. I kind of remember him like that, and and the toilet thing kind of. Oh no! What do you think of Sean? I I want to say that the toilet thing was much earlier than okay. the shaving fight. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I just had been covered in shaving cream. It was hilarious. <laughs> but you know, he it's not like he didn't get his revenge later on with water fights and that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I I don't remember getting the the. I remember it being a pretty even fight. But you know how it is when you're when you're little. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I do remember that was just one of those memories. It was a, it was a very fun day. It yeah, was, yeah, it was fun. It was and it was spontaneous too. It wasn't one of those things we had planned on doing. Right, right. Well, I guess that's kind of the way it has to work. Now, years later, we had an event in Albuquerque at my house, and uh, and Ben uh, totally set me up, man, and Arthur. Um, he talked Arthur into luring me around the house to, to, uh, show me something. And then he was on the roof with a five gallon bucket of water and he absolutely got me. And, and at this stage, I mean, I think you were the one who was a lot more fit and I was, I had gotten older and I couldn't move as fast and couldn't compete with a water fighting nearly as as much as before and and uh he just like come here you know arthur says come here come here look at this and i was getting ready to explain to him what this thing was and it's just like boom i mean just a massive amount of water it's like i felt so betrayed it it just it hurt it hurt because i felt so betrayed <laughs> especially by arthur so i so but, I you know, him back. i'm so sorry that you feel betrayed because you know, that wasn't the intention at all. It wasn't about loyalty. It was just about having fun. And, <laughs> and you know, Arthur being comfortable enough to to tease his dad and to do yeah. something like that is is fun. Well, I think I think um, what hurt is that I thought he was genuinely interested in something mechanical that I would be able to explain. And then at that moment, it was like, <laughs> got hit by water. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, it was just it was just one of those things. You know how in life <laughs> sometimes things don't go to usually they don't go to plan, but sometimes they just go perfectly to plan. Right. That's true. And because uh, yeah. it would be easy to to miss, you know, because I'm way I'm a, it was like the corner of the roof. So I don't know how high that is, maybe 13, it's, 14 feet. Yeah, it's way up there. Yeah. You could have missed. Um, you could have moved, um, but but it just it just one of those it just worked out perfectly, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, you know yeah, I'll play. You know what I mean? Like okay, you know we're gonna have a water fight. Even if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna do this. <laughs> we're gonna do that. And, and the the I got the water from that that um, pond you had in front. I was like, oh careful not, not to scoop up any fish. And I, those poor fish by the end of that water fight were like down into a little bit of water. Oh, man. 